Hello everyone, thank you for coming. Um, this is my talk. I just realised that the, uh, the title is actually slightly misleading. I called it hosting your own cloud. This talk's actually about hosting my own cloud because this is what worked for me. Um, other solutions are available and you probably do want something different to what I did. But I'm going to uh, go through the things I didn't do and why, as well as the things I did do. So, uh, yeah, hopefully it will be useful to you. So what am I talking about when I say cloud? Because cloud is a silly word which is used to mean all sorts of things which it shouldn't, some things it should, and a lot of things that people don't understand. So what I'm talking here specifically about is sort of services, um, application type services in the cloud, um, mainly access through your web browser, um, so web applications to a large extent, but you know, other services as well which you access online, um, so from any computer using a protocol, you get pretty much the same result um, without having, hopefully, platform independent. It shouldn't matter too much what you actually got, you'd still be able to do the same things. Um, so, the specific things I'm going to look at are um, file storage, um, the syncing of files between computers, uh, office type productivity things, and other web apps. Um, and the other thing which I've looked at, which I've not got around to doing yet because I've been uh, doing things like organising events. So first of all, why did I want to do this in the first place? Um, here's some reasons you might want to do it. Um, free, oh no, sorry, that's a freedom free, not a uh, money free, I should remember that. Um, yeah, um, okay, control over your data is one which has been discussed quite a lot um, this weekend. Uh, could be seen as a big paranoid thing that Google Uncle or Dropbox are going to read all your files and steal all your data and it's going to be the end of the world. Um, I'm not particularly paranoid about it, I just sort of don't see a particular reason to give them all my data if I don't need to. Some things are private and, you know, I wouldn't give them to um, Sainsbury's or any other company, so why should I give them to Google just because I use their services for some other things? Um, you know, some private things should be kept private, I think. Um, you get to use your own hardware, um, which I like because that's the way I like to think of computers. I mean, um, you start, you install Ubuntu, um, I'm not going to give you too much assuring that, don't worry. Um, and you get Ubuntu 1, and you get an Ubuntu 1 account, and you get some storage. Um, you get 5 gigabytes of storage, when you fill that up, you can pay for some more. But then, if I've got a server with a terabyte of storage on, why am I then paying another company for some more storage when I've already got loads more than they give me for the same amount I paid for those discs. Um, I just sort of, it's, a, yeah, um, it's not actually going to be one which I was using before I moved, I was using Dropbox, so I should probably be having a go instead. Um, it's free as in freedom because I'm using free and open source software um, and I'm keeping control of my data. Look at me, Richard Storman. Um, and it's fun because I like doing this sort of thing. Um, I'm a web developer. Um, I've been using a lot of web apps, so I enjoy that sort of stuff. Um, and it gives me some new projects to look at and get interested in and do interviews about and so on. Right, so the first thing I wanted to do was stop using Dropbox uh, because I was filling it up too quickly. Um, so I started looking at what open source alternatives there were um, and what closed source alternatives there were, and there's quite a few. Um, like sort of similar services by other people, um, some more open than others, some cheaper than others. Um, there are two main open source solutions which I found, um, one of which is called SyncMe, which is an amazing project. The idea is that if you have some storage on a service somewhere on the internet, you can sync your files to it, no matter what that storage actually is. So things that are either being implemented or worked on, you've got things like WebDAV, FSH, FTP, things you'd expect. Um, but then he's also put it into things like Picasa, so it will chop up your files, pretend they're images, put them on your Picasa account, and then sync them between you and that. You can do the same with um, email accounts, IMAP accounts. Uh, if anyone ever used Gmail Drive when um, Gmail first came out, it's um, a similar sort of idea to that in a lot of cases. Um, the trouble with Sync, the reason I didn't go with it in the end is because it's quite um, a new project and there's still 
quite a bit of work to be done. It didn't work, it didn't support the storage which I was planning on using at the time. Um, the other one I found is OwnCloud, which is a uh, PHP, no sorry, yes, a KDE community project, that's what I wanted to say. Um, so it's not actually part of the KDE software collection, as I don't know if it's still called that, um, but it's you know, by people from the KDE community. Um, it's in active firm at the moment, they're working on version 2. Um, I've got version 1.2, I think it's still really the latest stable version. Um, now, the title of this slide is file syncing. Uh, one caveat is that OwnCloud doesn't have a syncing client yet. Um, what it does do is create um, a web dev share, basically, um, with the PHP. So you basically just point a web dev client that's basically any file browser on any system. You can get stuff for um, mobile phones as well. Uh, and point it at a PHP page and it gives you a folder with all of your files in, assuming you're connected to the internet. So yeah, the big downside at the moment is we haven't got the syncing quite done yet, so you don't have offline access. But that's coming with the new version, which is being largely rewritten to um, meet some of the end goals of the project anyway. One of the things I really like about OwnCloud is that um, setting it up is an absolute doddle. You just stick it on your server, you say, make me an SQLite database, go, and it's there and you're ready to use it. So for what I was wanting to do, it just it was the solution which was the easiest for me to set up. So it won me over straight away. Um, yeah, and as I said, the project is in heavy development. So um, there's also an Android, an official Android app. As I say, you can install proprietary web dash clients and they work fine, but if you want something that's freer, then you can wait for the official app to come out. Uh, I don't know if they're planning BlackBerry and iPhone, but I imagine not. Oh yeah, sorry, something else I should mention about OwnCloud. One of the other sort of goals of the project is that um, it's going to be a, a platform for developing other sort of cloud-type web apps on top of. So it's not just a file store thing, it's actually a development platform as well. So it's going to be um, you know, plugins that look into the storage and things like that. So you could do, you could write things like Google Apps um, that will work as plugins to a basic own cloud install. So eventually you can build up a whole, you know, online operating system on top of own cloud if that's what you want. Right, so once I've got my files up there, the other thing I want to do is look at um, office productivity stuff. So things like um, word processing to an extent. I don't actually do a lot of word processing. What I will do more is note taking. Um, spreadsheets, um, because whenever I create a spreadsheet, it's usually something I want to be able to access from wherever I am rather than just from the computer it's on. Um, and presentations, like I'm doing today. Um, so looking again at open source solutions, there's a couple of um, like full on uh, enterprise groupware suites which are web based. Um, uh, One's called Fair Office, which used to be called, uh, no, I can't remember. OpenGoo, that's the one, uh, and Zebra, which is now owned by VMware. Uh, both of those are, as I said, they're rented by products, but they're open core, so there is a community edition of each one, uh, which you can get for free. The Fair Office one, you can only actually find it if you know that it exists, because it's buried in their website somewhere, but the Zebra one is pretty easy to find. Um, and as I say, these are full. Groupware suite, so you get you know email and calendaring and everything else, uh, which was a bit overkill for what I needed, and they were pretty heavyweight, and quite a lot was involved in installing them. This wasn't just a you know create a database, stick it on there. There was a lot of different packages I needed and dependencies and things. I did get both of them running at one point, but by the time I'd done that, I was bored of them already, uh, and they don't look very nice. They look like well, they look old. Um, I don't know if that's just because I've got three versions which don't have fancy skins or something. Um, so I went looking for something else which could also do all the things I wanted to, and surprisingly, the one I came across was Drupal, which I used before. I run my blog on it for some reason, basically because I need a new blog and I wanted to see what Drupal could do at the same time. So I now have a whole Drupal install just for running my blog. Um, but I also have another Drupal install for running my other suite, which is a bit more of a um, Usability a bit more. So 
to start off with, um, well, for those of you who don't know what Drupal is, it's a web-based CMS written in PHP, MySQL, again, um, area I'm familiar with, so it was uh, easy for me to get into. Um, and the great thing about Drupal is that it's ridiculously extensible. If you want to do something else with it, then you can, um, and people probably already have. Uh, so I looked at options for taking notes and word processing, um, and the two things I found were Markdown, which is a sort of really lightweight wiki syntax. Um, so you get a plain text field, you type in stuff, and you put like, um, if you want to do a list of uh, bullet points, you put a star at the beginning of each line, and then it brings into HTML. This was written in Markdown, and didn't actually do any of this as tax or anything. Um, and if you want it, a more, if you're a more visual person, if you're more used to GUI stuff, then um, there's also a uh, WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get plugin, um, which you install, uh, instead of having a plain text field to edit, you then get a WYSIWYG editor with a formatting toolbar and everything, and as you format it, see what happens. I haven't opted to that just because I don't really need it, that's not really what I'm using for. Um, but if you're that kind of person, then that stuff's available to you. Uh, I also want to do presentations, uh, and there's a plugin for a system called S5. This was written several years ago um, as a way of creating presentations from web pages using only existing web standards, so HTML, JavaScript, CSS, and nothing else. And um, so you create an HTML page with um, your content in, and you load the CSS and JavaScript you need, and when you go to a page, it renders it in uh, slides like this, which is very nice and very easy to put together, very portable, which is the other thing I like about it. You can just stick it on a website, and you can have the URL to your slides within your slides, and then go to the slides, and it's all very self-referential. Um, so yeah, um, the way the plugins work together, as I said, I wrote this in Markdown, so I'm just using, I just, I, I'll come to my little quick demo bit in a minute. Um, I just use the same as I use to create any other Drupal page, just with these plugins enabled, and then I create a link that says display this as a slideshow instead of a page, and then I get it like this, which is nice. Um, and the other thing I discovered was uh, a project called Social Calc, which is um, essentially an open source Google Spreadsheets type of thing written in JavaScript, um, which was written by one of the authors of VisiCalc, which was the original spreadsheet thing. Um, so this allows you to have an online spreadsheet embedded in a Drupal page, which you can then access from everywhere and it supports. Um, I'm, I'm sure there's lots of other things that Google Docs and proper spreadsheet packages support, but I never really use them. So social health is perfect for what I need. Um, so there's some other areas which I've looked at, which I've started to use, um, or which I thought maybe later. Um, webmail. Uh, I use IMAP email, and it's nice to have the same client wherever you are and not have to set them up, but the, um, the webmail file that comes with my client isn't brilliant. Um, so I've got RAMQ running my server, which is a really, really nice um, webmail client. Um, does, I think, pop and IMAP, um, and gives you a nice sort of um, rich AJAX interface, so you've got that like, drag and drop of your emails. It's a, it's a lot like using um, a proper, nicely styled desktop email client, but um, on the web and say wherever you are. Um, photos, at the moment, if I want to share a photo, I upload it to Twitpic or Flickr and then put a link in a tweet. Um, I did, what I like to do is upload it to a system running on my own server and then put the link in a tweet. Um, so uh, I've looked at some solutions. Uh, gallery was the one which jumped out at me, uh, which is an open source gallery program, strangely enough. Um, so you can upload your photos to it, organize and categorize them and so on, uh, and share them. Um, a few problems with it, partly to do with uh, it not, uh, the Android client not having very good support for SSL. Um, that's another thing. Everything that I access on my server, I do over a secure connection, so I know that. So, I say I know that it's safe, I'm using the sales line certificate, but that's the problem. Um, we'll wrap that later. Um, social networking. Um, StatusNet and Diaspora are two distributed social networking tools uh, that have been mentioned. Uh, 
earlier this weekend. Um, so, you know, I might look at sometime in the future uh, installing an instance of them on my server, um, federating them with other instances, so then I've got connection but separation as well, which is the idea, I think. Um, collaborative editing is something which would be really nice. That's why I still use Google Docs, um, because um, there's nothing you can really do in Drupal which will let you collaboratively edit with just anyone that you want to on the fly. Um, you have to do something horrible, set up an account for everyone you want to be able to use it. Um, and I'm not sure how actually collaborative editing would work. You'd have to say, message each other, tell you to say it and things like that. Um, but Etherpad is an open source collaborative document editor. Um, <laughs> It's fairly heavyweight because I think it runs on Java, but someone has just ported it to Node.js, which is a lightweight server-side JavaScript engine. Um, so that might be another solution to look at if you wanted something to do that sort of thing. Um, and I'm sure there's others which I haven't thought of, um, which I'll come across at some point. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick demo to show you how I do stuff in Drupal, just in case you're wondering. my amazing um, domain, uh, which, because the survey is running on my home connection, which is just with regular ADSL, ISP, I don't have a static IP address, um, so I've got, I'm using a service called Dynamic DNS, which will, um, you set it up on your router, every time your router gets a new IP address, it says to Dynamic DNS, I'm now here, and so that URL will always point to me, uh, which is a lot easier than looking at my IP address every time. Um, so yeah, this is what I get. Yeah, this is why I get my login to Drupal. It's like when you log into Google Docs, list of all my documents. Um, I've got links across the top to create new stuff, so I can create a new paper presentation, create a new spreadsheet. I'll do that one because it's quite fun. So you get a nice little spreadsheet embedded in the page, you've got cells, you've got formulas in a formula table. It looks horrible on here because the screen's quite narrow, it's all squashed up. But you get you know, a full toolbar, um, it looks a bit grey, but you can, um, there's theming for it and the cells support colours and formatting and all sorts like that. Um, and I can, yeah, I can tag stuff which will categorise it, um, so if I want to look back to it later, just like you can do in Google Docs, tag stuff rather than putting it in files so you can have multiple um, tags assigned to each file, um, everything's indexed, so if I want to find something specific, I can search it. Um, can you upload, download, export, import? No, but then I never do that, so I've never come across how I'm going to do that. With Google Docs, I only edit stuff online and refer to it online, so I've never come across the problem of how I'm going to replicate that somewhere else. Um, yeah, and this is how I create a page. Literally, it's just an empty field. If I want to create a presentation, then I've got a little template here which I can copy and paste up, and then just copy this bit and have lots more slides. Um, so, just in case you're interested. so that um, anonymous users, um, not the group we discussed yesterday, uh, can, can't actually access any of the content. It's all behind login. Um, although if I publish it and then give someone the link, they can access it. Um, so if I need to um, so share some of my notes with someone, or if I've done a presentation and I want to put it online, 
then I can do that without having to give people accounts on Drupal, which is handy as well. Um, and that's about all I've got to say. So, um, keep chewing for Mac about not, not being good too long. What's the best you want to do? I don't know. Thank you. So, yes, any questions? In all seriousness. Some of the guys from the Unhosted project work on OwnPowers. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, yeah. They're, I think they're working with the people from UNG to add on those to mm -hmm. UNG. I ah, think cool. they're finishing the third quarter for. Because some of the stuff is finished and some of it isn't. Yeah, just for those of you who don't know what Unhosted is, this is another really interesting project where um, the idea is that um, any web, uh, like, cloud based service you use um, can hook into Unhosted storage, which is basically a tool open protocol storage. So you can rent some unhosted storage on a server and then all of your, so for instance, all of your diaspora data could be stored on your unhosted service rather than on joint diaspora to all this server. Or you could have your own server at home with this stuff on and so on. So yeah, I'll take, I'll take a look at that. Yes? How long does this work on blocking? They say no taking. Uh, I don't know if you do it offline. Um, if I had to do it online, I would just write some mark down in a text file and copy and paste it when I was done <laughs> at the moment. I haven't, I, I've not actually got myself into that situation. I, um, I can also do it on my phone. I've installed a mobile theme on Drupal, um, which makes it really easy to do it on my phone. It just gives me basically a screen-sized text box, which I just write mark down into. So if I'm stuck, I just pop on even GPRS will do because it's a nice, lightweight theme. Are there any auto saving? Um, mm, there probably are, and I haven't looked at them, but now you've mentioned it, that would be really useful yeah, because I so have so got to a top, yes, yes, that's definitely worth looking into, thank you. Yeah, just, um, my nation sat back bringing it all into your home is, is how you, how you back it up. I mean, I know that's a problem, it's the same wherever you keep your, yeah, your data, but in some ways it's an easier problem to fix if you do. Be yeah, I mean, all of this, all of this um, putting in my home is just what I decide to do because I like having a server running on my desk. Um, I like being able to poke it occasionally. But yeah, this could be done in a VPS on shared hosting, even because it's all web apps. I mean, one, one of the major problems with, with this sort of thing, most of us are behind ADSL connections. Yeah. And you want to start trying to back up your data set to a different location. Mm. You've got the problem with the upload limitation, upload bandwidth. Whereas if you put it on a VPS, yeah, no, that's that's so then you can download it to a local yes, server, absolutely. and then you can get some a lot, lot quicker and easier to do. Yeah, no, there are definitely, uh, definitely reasons to be doing that. But I mean, how, how do you go about backing up your... Um, well, well, it's all, everything's on a RAID array, and I hope I'll apply it to that. Plus, I'll apply it to that. Yeah, um, I don't do much at the moment, I don't do as much as I should. But then, I mean, none of this mission critical either. It's just notes and stuff. Do you think, like, something like this would be usable for a normal person if it was, say, going like Couch TV and you know, Couch App, so you could just download and use it offline? Do you think it would make much of a difference? Um, or, like, I don't see why not. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. It's like you just talk about backing it up and knowing you're online and offline. Yeah. Like, I think a lot of contracts are into that. It's kind of seamless. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another thing to mention is that, it just, sorry, you just mentioned normal people, yeah. which I hadn't um, mentioned before. Like, all of this stuff I, all of this stuff I set up myself. Um, but obviously, yeah, on my own server, but obviously you can get hosted Drupal and you can get, um, there's a company called Package Cloud, I think, who will sell you um, a server with own cloud on it and things like that. So, um, 
you know, if you don't have the chip in your shoulder that I have about um, hard disk, about painful hard disk space where you've got a lot to get, then, um, you know, that sort of stuff's available as well. <coughs> Right then. Um, I'll leave it there. Thank you.